In this video of Beagle Boys Rabbit Hunting, we go on a typical hare hunt and we show you some techniques that we use every time we go out. On this particular hunt, we don't end up getting a hare, but we have a lot of fun and we hope you enjoy it too. Thanks for watching. Shoe hare hunt today. We want to show you some things that we pack before any hunt. So, first of all, I have the leashes. We each have two dogs that we normally bring. And I have the coupler here for both of my dogs so we can lead them. And today, since we're going to be snowshoe rabbit hunting, I put the screwed on the big antenna. And this is just the Alpha 100, the Garmin. And two of our dogs today will have tracking systems on them, so we'll be able to keep an eye on where they are. I also have a walkie-talkie right here. Walkie-talkies are very important. We bring them on uh, every hunt that we go on. Um, in my backpack here, on the sides, I got extra shells. I just keep them in this mesh, so when I shoot, I can just take them out real easy without taking off my backpack. I got them on both sides here. Inside my backpack, I got uh, my bomber hat that I wear because it's pretty cold usually every time we go out snowshoe rabbit hunting. I wear that, balaclava, and a hat to go underneath. I've got some warm but thin gloves for shooting. I also have, let's see, I have two other sets of gloves. I have my big gloves just in case it gets really cold. Most of the time it's uh, close to zero when we go. And I got another set. Always come in handy. We all bring maybe two, three pairs of gloves every time. I also got a real thin pair of gloves just in case it gets warm. Always keep it in my backpack. Hunting license. What else do I got here? Extra box of bullets just in case we uh, see a lot of rabbits. You never want to be out there without uh, enough bullets. Um, got my hunting knife in here. I always go with a few headlamps, headlamp and flashlight. Some of the times we don't get out till dark. It gets dark around here about 4.30. Um, always want to have a light with you. And I have the dog's tracking collars in here. I put those on right before the hunt. And uh, that's what they look like. They're a little big for the dogs, but um, they're not too bad. And uh, we put these through a lot of brush, and they've held up real good. And that's just the Alpha 100 uh, from Garmin. So we got the two tracking collars. And last but not least, Walmart bags. I carry a ton of them. I put them right in the big part of my jacket. So every time I kill a rabbit or a hare, throw it in the Walmart bag. All the blood stays in there probably want to double up your bags just in case they have holes in them and then I throw them right in the big part of my uh, backpack and uh, that's everything we take on our hunts. This is our dog box that we put the dogs in. Um, it can hold probably about three or four dogs on each side. It was really made for uh, coon dogs but we use it for our beagles. I put my two on this side. Dad puts his two beagles on this side. I'll show you how they go in there. They go just like that. And then uh, we've got a little latch here. Dad brings up these so they lock on. The dogs stay nice and warm in there. After the hunt, they can lay down on the beds and it's nice, comfy, cozy for them. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to take out my dogs and put the tracking collars on them. This is Louie and Bo. And the black one's for Louie. The orange one I put on Bo, and when it and uh, when it comes up on the screen, Louis's collar comes up on as red on my uh, tracking system, and uh, Bo is blue. So I just put it on them. That, and I check to see because. These are puppies and they're always growing, so their neck size is getting always, every day, a little bit different. So. You want to have it snug enough where if you need to shock them, you can, and it won't fall off, and loose enough that they're not uh, choking. 
I put it on them like that. And today, because we're going close, I'm just going to turn it on right now. So then when we release them out of the truck, it's on and ready to go. So there, his is on. And I put them right back in the box. So I got the shot collars on both our dogs. Um, and you see these vests here, these work vests? These aren't really made for beagle hunting, but uh, we like to use them especially for snowshoes. You can see them for a long distance in the woods, especially when we get to the area we are. It keeps them warm in the winter when it's real cold, and it also keeps them from being shot accidentally. So we try the, we put on the vest. It doesn't really slow them down. We're not gonna be hunting a lot of brush today, so uh, it doesn't fall off at all. And what we do is, we'll put our bags right above the dog box. Everything's ready to go. That's the mountain we'll be hunting. So we're trying to get to our hunting location. Just recently snowed a, a skim of snow out there and our truck's having a hard time getting up the hill. We're in two wheel drive right now. So oh. down the road. Got a lot of hemlock trees. That's what we're looking for. Short little hemlock trees. We're making it. We're going up about a thousand feet today. Because that's where the snowshoes live. Yep, this is my aunt and uncle's little homestead here. No one lives in it. No one has it. No one has in years. Here's the old farm. We're gonna have to walk about a half mile from here. So, we're getting geared up, getting ready to go for the snowshoe rabbit hunt. We're gonna be hunting about a thousand acres here. It's on top of a mountain. We drove up to elevation. We're about, we're gonna be a little bit over a thousand feet today. And that's where the snowshoe rabbits live around here. They need, uh, they need the cold weather so they can blend in with the snow and uh, down below they just don't get enough snow to survive. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the dogs on leashes, getting them out of this, um, this deer area, a lot of deer right here. So we're going to keep them on leashes, we're going to walk about a half mile through the woods, and we're going to be looking for um, small logged areas that have a lot of uh, small hemlocks. Um, and the rabbits like to stay right underneath it. So. That's what we're going to look for. We're going to see if we can find any uh, tracks going across the road and then we'll release the dogs and we'll begin our hunt. Today is about 10 degrees. We just had a light snow. It's just perfect for uh, looking for fresh tracks. We haven't been out in quite some time because we had a huge ice storm uh, a few days ago and uh, we haven't been able to get the dogs out at all. They haven't been able to smell. It's been cold um, and you can't even walk through it. So uh, today's the first day we've been out in a while and it's our first day of snowshoe hunting. So now we're going to be taking the dogs up about a half mile. And we're going to have to walk through this stuff. It's really uh, hard to walk on, slippery. The dogs can get over it, but uh, it's going to be a pain for us. Hopefully we can get up there.
this trail about a half mile, and what we're looking for is we're looking for any fresh rabbit tracks or hare tracks to go across this path. We haven't cut any yet, but we're also looking for these small hemlock trees. And when they get really tight and really clustered, that's where you're going to find your rabbits. So we're going to be heading up this trail, and hopefully soon, in these short little hemlock trees, it's been recently logged, we'll find some snowshoe hare. And what we're going to first find is the tracks. When we get to the tracks, we'll release the dogs, and uh, hopefully we'll get one going here. Okay, so we found some hemlock trees that we're looking for. We're going to let our two older dogs loose see if they can uh, start one here. You can see that's the sort of uh, scrub that we're looking for. That's what they're going to be hide hiding in. So we got the dogs all spread out. Just trying to thrash the brush, cover as much air as we can. We're getting a few whimpers here and there, but uh, we haven't seen many fresh tracks. The, the snowshoes are... Uh, bedded down for the day. They're staying right in their holes, so it might be a little tough getting them running. But we got a few uh, barks coming out of bow over here. Alright, so there's the snowshoe print. The dog's got him running. He, they take, have taken him one loop so far. We just struck him up and we're hoping he comes around. What we're going to do is we're going to wait right on this track and usually they'll come right right around the same way they did. So odds are he's going to come straight back this way and hopefully we'll get a shot. We'll see if it works. Okay. Sounds like they're going up the hill. Let me double check on my GPS. He's going up the hill to our house, east. This is why we get this uh, GPS. It's got the extra long antenna, so um, we can track up to nine miles away. Um, and right now I'm looking at the screen, looking to see where this rabbit goes. These hairs... These hares will routinely go a half mile, mile away. They'll get out of hearing distance of, the, of from us, from the dogs. So this is a big help um, to uh, a successful hunt. So we've been struggling to find a spot to uh, catch the rabbit coming across, but. Uh, they weren't pushing them too well today, and we never did get that rabbit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to catch the dogs. It's getting late, and uh, hopefully we get to the truck before nightfall. So we made it back to the truck just in the nick of time. It's just getting dark now, and I guess better luck next time.